Oh, we're at Soul Tribe Huddle and we're talking about challenges around getting team. So, oh, look, it's Jasper. Hi, beautiful. We're getting photo bombed by my cat. Yeah, she's got hair envy and now she's got cat envy. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, baby boy. He's beautiful. Sorry. He's I'll beautiful. Stop. Sweet talking your cat. <laughs> he, can't, he probably can't hear you anyway. So, um, who wants to talk about their challenges around the team? I can. Go for it, Bonnie. Um, I've been finding that my brain is still trying to figure out, not the system, but the level where I'm at, where my resources and everything are, and because it takes me so much time to figure things out and retain it in my memory, I feel like if I got team, and I know this is just my brain talking, but I feel like if I got team that I wouldn't be able to do a really good job with them, because I'm kind of, I feel like I'm all over the place with it anyway. Aww. Okay, um, yeah, I get that. I get that. And wasn't there a part of you that was feeling the same way for a while, Maxine? Yes, and I, I'll be completely honest, I still feel that way. Mm. And I've got, I've got five team now and I still feel inadequate. Um, but tell uh, you know, me, realistically, okay, Maxine, you can talk from experience here. For me, that's never been an issue for me, so it's hard for me to talk for that um, because I've always been someone that's known the, you know, where to find everything. Um, but so for you, Maxine, what do you spend most of your day doing? You know, think about your team and what you spend with them in your day. How much of that is actually needing resources? Um, I think probably Mo Moni's a bit like me. She is, you are a knowledge person, Moni. So you're a bit like me in that you want to get everything kind of the big picture and everything real straight in your head before yep. you do it. Before you can talk to anyone else about it. Yeah, but what I'm understanding, and that's why Adam's training last night was so good, is that he says really it's, this business is just about getting people to SDVF and qualified. That's it. And that part of the process is, is quite simple. I mean, once you get higher up into SS, SSCQ, NMD, um, it's a bit more complicated. But I think by the time, and what I'm finding is by the time I, now that I've got my head around how to get someone to SDVF and qualified, the other stuff up there is starting to make more sense as well. So when I first, thanks Maxine, that's perfect. <clears throat> so when I first started in the business, I had this whole thing of, um, you know, like for me, I was more about, so I'm going to get to this step and then I'm going to get to that step and then I'm going to get to that step. For me, I wasn't looking at the big picture quite the same. And that's, I think, is how I managed to get through. Hey, Karen. So I think for you, Moni, and Maxine is right, all you need to know is how to get your team to DVF and SDVF, that's it. And that part is fairly simple. Above that, you actually don't need to know anymore. You don't even need to know how to get them qualified because that comes in time. And that, again, is something that Maxine, that I can help you with once you get there. But right now, all you need to understand is how to get your team to DVF and to SDVF. So do you, do you, do, do you know how the fast track and that works? Do you know what the points are? Do you understand that? Yeah, I understand the way the fast track way or the, the cumulative way. Um, I suppose the thing that underlies it is that having people say no, they don't want to be involved in the business, even if I think that they'd be really good at it and it would help them. Yeah. So that's, that's, that can actually, so that always comes from a belief. 
So there's an, yep. always an underlying belief there around why it is you find that difficult. Um, so I think for you, it would be really good to have a think about why is it that people keep saying that they're not interested? How many people would you be talking to, say, on a daily basis or inviting to look at the business? I haven't invited anyone. I felt so clumsy with it all that I haven't felt okay about saying this is what I'm doing, have a look at it. Okay. Getting, so, sorry? I'm getting um, lots of support from family and friends, but it's more, it's your thing, rather than connecting with me about it. So that's actually what they're saying to you? Directly? Well, that's what you feel that they're thinking? That's what I feel they're thinking. So it all comes back to what you believe about it. So no one's, so if you haven't invited anyone, no one would have said, oh no, that's not for me. It's just something that you think's going on. It's your perception of what other people think. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's a belief that you have there around, um, you know, that people aren't going to want this. And that's around you feeling like you can't put yourself out there to ask them. So there's a, a not a, there's a lot of confidence there that you need to grow to do that. And the yeah. belief that that's you... hard. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's totally hard. I get that. I still struggle with fear when I invite people. But it gets easier and easier and easier as you go along. And some people are harder than others. Some people are like, oh, I don't know about that. And I still judge it. Um, so it's a, it is a work in progress and it is something that's always going to be with you. But it's, it's actually stepping outside of that comfort zone and doing it anyway, even though it gives you the shits, even though you think, oh my God, what is this person going to think of me? What's going to happen? At the end of the day, um, nothing is going to happen. Um, how many times, I don't know how many times, I've, I've got a whole book full of people that I've invited to look at the business and none of them have unfriended me. None of them. I mean, I'm talking, I've probably got 100 people in my box. Me no, either. Yeah, no one has unfriended me. In fact, probably about half of them, I still have regular contact with. We, like, get on really well. It's like, you know, they, they are hugely supportive of what I do. So it's just about getting out of your own way and just inviting them anyway. Because... Yeah, can I, can I make a comment here, guys? Go for um, it. I've seen the way that you and, Ta you and Maxine now have done your lives, um, which you guys never used to do. And I'm still working up to the lives, money for you as well. It's hard. It's like, it's, it's, like, it's scary. And it's like, I don't want to do that. But I've watched these two do it, and they're doing it. And it, you know, it, it does seem to be connecting with people. And it's, it really is like Tanya said, pushing you out of your comfort zone. Sorry if I'm sorry to interject there, but... It's good. It's good you keep interjecting, it's fine. Um, that's what I want in our trainings, is for everyone to put their input in, because we're all learning, we're all growing together, and we've all got wisdom to share, so go for it. Um, yeah, and that's true, it's true. It's about, you know, like when I first started this business, the last thing I wanted to do was get on the live on Facebook. I was yeah. like, no way there's no way I could do that and so that for me was outside of my comfort zone there was no way that I could get on an event let alone host it even um, just sharing my story was enough um, yeah and that was massive for me so it's all about make, taking that first step money and that's the hardest just deciding to do it anyway and take that first step the other thing that you can look at is change your, your wording, change your story around it. So what are you thinking when you go to, so when you think about, oh, I've got to send an invite out to, for someone to look at the business, what's going through your mind? Um, I guess that comes down to competency because it's a visual thing and it's a talking thing and I can't always guarantee that I'm going to be the right can I have a red bush? Thank you. Sorry, what was that, Molly? Sorry, where did you get to? Uh, I got to get you on your visual. 
Yeah, that. How can I say this? That because it's a visual thing, like walking with people and having. I haven't had a three way yet, and I'm really self conscious about how I am on the the page, as it were. Oh, so you're concerned about what people see in terms of in terms of the way you speak? Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so you're not very confident in speaking. No. Okay. Okay, so that that in terms of your three way, actually, you don't need to worry about that because um, your upline will be doing the talking anyway. For one, okay. The other thing yeah. is. Um, it's really, it's, it's, it's loud and clear to me that for you it really is about confidence in yourself and your abilities to make this work. Yep. So I would definitely be looking at um, some self-development money. Um, so I can really recommend for you the big leap. In fact, Karen, this will be amazing for you too, honey. In fact, Priska, this will be amazing for you too, honey. So even you, Rach. The Big Leap is an amazing, amazing um, book. You can actually get it on audio. It's really cheap. It's only a few dollars on audio. You can also get um, audio books. So if you get yourself an account for audio books, you don't have to pay anything and you get a free book a month. Who is it by? It's by Gay Hendricks. So I've got yeah. a version. Um, is that on Audible or audiobooks? I've got you one coming, Maxine. That's your that's your reward for your incentives last for your thing, winning last month. I wasn't going to tell you, but yeah, it's an amazing book. <laughs> really good for helping you get through fear. Yeah. So you don't mm. need to worry about it, Maxine. That's why I suggested everyone else look at it and not you. Actually. Not um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forced you into that corner. Um, I was actually going to say something this the, today, this afternoon. I listened to a beautiful um, uh, interview on um, Soul Food Sunday with Oprah Winfrey. Um, I can't remember who she was interviewing, but he was saying every time you up level, you meet huge resistance from your mind. Mm -hmm. That's the self-sabotage, and that's something that Gay Hendricks talks a lot about, and that's what this whole book's about, about the self-sabotage yeah. you do. Yeah, and there's no other way to deal with that huge resistance that you get other than by just, you know, pushing forward and doing it anyway. And um, the other point he made was whenever, whatever it is that you're avoiding doing is the thing that is going to be most valuable to you in your soul journey yeah in your soul yeah that's very true too i've definitely heard that one so um you know and i've always suggested i've always done like at least half an hour self-development every day so even if i plug my so i i love audio audio works really well for me because it means that i can plug my earphones in while i'm cooking dinner i can listen to it or i can have it on my my phone talking to me while I'm doing something. Um, so if that works for you, do that. I'd rather do that than sit down and take half an hour out of my day to read a book, but some of you might be okay with that. It's a good break, a good sitting down break away from a screen. And I'd, so I definitely recommend that you all read that. That will help you get past. He talks about the upper limit and what happens when we get, when we get to success our brain comes in and sabotages that and that's what creates a whole lot of fear for us so it's like what Maxine was talking about with you know we hit resistance it's the same thing and so he gives you strategies to help you get through those so and so, so what was that one time can you that's, it's can called that to us later maybe yeah I can do that I can pop it in um, the chat so for you, Moni, I'd definitely be looking at that. I'd definitely be reading that. And even if you just go over it all the time, so even if you could read it, you, you listen to it through, just keep listening to it. Because every time we get something new out of something. Okay. 
and for you, in terms of your, your confidence, are you okay with with messaging people? So like the verbiage on messaging people, initially inviting and responding? I'm I'm getting I'm getting better at the verbiage on writing, but I haven't actually done any inviting. Okay, so I think for you, because you know that you've got Maxine there, and if you ever feel like, oh my, what do I say? Just yeah. ask Maxine, she will help you with the verbiage. There's a whole lot of these inviting templates. Where did I put them? I'm sure I put them up in Soul Tribe. So if you go, in fact, maybe we should put those in the files. I'm on Soul Tribe. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to put them in the files or something. Because what you can do is you can save that to yourself on Messenger. So I always save everything to myself, things like verbiage, so that I can just pull it up, copy and paste it, pop it in, take out what needs to come out and just change what needs to change. The other thing that's really good is the scripts. So the scripts are in both Team Love and Team Freestyle under albums. In fact, the scripts are actually in files in Team Freestyle. Scripts and marketing. Have you got that, Molly? You should have that. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. It's got all your verbiage in there. <coughs> For you, Molly, it's just doing it. It's really... In I was just going to say something about the lives. Yeah. And I think that that's what got me over my resistance was I thought, well, I can do a live and I can just make it really, really short. You know, I can just make it one or two, one minute long um, mm -hmm. and have a very focused thing that I'm going to talk about. So I started doing just talking about the shred, very briefly about what's involved. And I think then it doesn't feel so overwhelming. You know, you do quite quite long lives, and you can feel really confident, but I think that's one way to get past the resistance. It's just, even Moni, just just saying, this is what's in our, our berry blend, and make it, you know, less than a minute. Yeah, the thing is with lives is when I first started, I, I went on with nothing particular to talk about, and I just thought, oh, I'll just wing it. That's the worst thing to do if you're scared of doing lives. So if you, yes. if you yeah, because it does freak you out, but it's the best thing for confidence because it makes you really pull on all your strengths and to find all your wisdoms. But so the best thing for you would to be have a plan around what you want to talk about and even write it down. And you know, Maxine's right, make it short. So our our we interview that we're going to do next week on my my page. That yep. will be really good for you. Yeah. That's why I decided to do it. Good on, good on you. That's really going to help you step out there and give you the confidence to start doing it more. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, it's all action. It's, just, it's doing. That's the thing that's going to help you get past it. So, Moni, we could talk about some subjects for lives that you could do. Some very short, simple lives that you could think about doing. yeah and you could talk about the shred yeah or, or even the shakes i think my first one i just talked about the shakes i just said what was in them um and and that that was it and i actually got a customer from that right so it really increases your visibility a lot doing lives so um Okay, so anyone else got any challenges they want to bring about getting team, around getting team? Karen, you can unmute yourself if you have. I see that look on your face. Right, yeah, I have a few. <laughs> um, I guess that for me is my biggest challenge is reaching out but and listening what you were to what you were saying to Moni, I think it's really just um, my self-belief system that's doing stupid stuff. 
um, and fair. So we've got the verbiage. We've got everything that we need. It's just a case of manning up and going, right, taking that leap of faith. Yeah. Because somewhere along the line, somebody's going to register with what we're saying. So yeah, I just got to stop being a scaredy cat. That's right. That's right, Kieran. That's exactly what it's about. Um, and that's the oh. hardest bit. That is the hardest bit for everyone is to actually just do it. You know, I've been there so many times. I really do understand. And there's been days where I'm like procrastinate. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that and I don't do it. But honestly, on the days when I do it, it's not that bad. It's actually not as bad as what I think it is. And I get some really good responses. You so, get really nice, nice feedback, actually. Yeah. We do. Yeah, absolutely, we do. So that, that is true. And I think as long as you can change the way you see it. So change your perception about it. So, you know, I was talking a little bit about that before, Moni, when, when, you know, I was asking you what your perception was around it. Are you thinking, well, you know, what is this person going to think of me? What if they delete me off Facebook? What if they don't want to be my friend anymore? What if they think I'm really weird and like, who is this person? Um, changing that to, well, what if, what if Maxine hadn't invited you to have a look at the business, Moni? And, you know, what if I hadn't invited you to have a look at the business, Karen? Would you have known about it? Oh, I'm a bit nosy. I'm good with getting my <laughs> figuring out stuff for myself. It's um, just parlaying that into, you know, into other people, you know, other people. So... I would have got there eventually. I'm just doing the fast track for myself. New year, yeah. new beginning. So, so if, if I hadn't have, if I hadn't have had those conversations with you, Kieran, would it would have, would have taken you longer? Would you still be in that same place? That's what I'm saying. You know, like would you have even known that there was something there until you know a long time down the track? I mean, for you, Mary. Because you came into it for the business or the product, it was the product, wasn't it? Product, yeah. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. What I'm really trying to say here is just that we we don't know what anybody's going through at any given moment, and we don't know if they've yeah. hit the rock bottom. Rock bottom is the best place for somebody to be in for us to be inviting them to to look at the business because that's usually when someone's going yep I'll look at it I'll look at anything I'm you know I'm ready usually they're ready so if you don't invite them you don't know whether it's going to be the best thing they've ever fallen upon or not you don't know whether they might be your next NMD and the other thing is you don't know if right now might not might not be the best time but it might be in six months. It might be in a year's time. We don't know that. Yeah. Uh, and, and I've had teams that have sat on the fence for a long, long, long time. And if I hadn't have followed up with her, who knows whether she'd be in the business right now. So keeping in contact is all part of planting seeds. And so when that person is ready, they're going to go, oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm ready now. I'll have a look at it now. Thanks very much. It's not that you're being a pest and that they're thinking that you're just a weirdo. It's that often they're going, oh, yeah, actually, it's just not the right time for me. Do you know something else? The reason why people don't necessarily respond to you is because nine times out of ten, they don't want to say no to you because if they say no, they'll close the door. But they don't want to say yes yet because they're not ready. But it's just they're going to leave it over there just to keep the door open a little bit. So, does anyone else have any wisdoms, any questions on challenges? Priska, do you have any, honey? I know. <laughs> No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anybody else? 
Do you want to share anything else, Maxine? Um, can't think of anything right now. Okay. So you know what? The fact that you guys are here is um, shows your dedication to wanting to make a difference because you knew that this training was about challenges around getting team and you're here. So well done to you. It shows that you actually want to step out of that comfort zone anyway and make a difference and actually do this. So that's huge. That's, that's actually, I, I, I do have something to add that's kind of like um, what you're saying, Tanya, is when I did my first live, even though my heart was hammering and out of and jumping out of my mouth I was so nervous um, after I finished it I just felt actually felt really proud of myself I just thought go go me I did something really terrifying and most people don't really do those things no. so you know even though it really sucks initially <laughs> You know, you, you feel quite good about yourself afterwards, you know. You give yourself quite a pat on the back. Absolutely. Yeah, Kieran's doing it tomorrow night and Monty's doing it next week. So, yay. Yay, so, yay for you both. That's awesome. <laughs> Monty, Monty, you've got a week to ponder it. Kieran's got yeah. 24 hours. <laughs> I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just going to do it. No, that's a, it's a really good way to start, though, because Tanya's yeah. kind of more basically um, driving the conversation. You're just really answering questions. So yeah. it's, a good way to, it's a good way to um, in, get initiated. Yeah, it is. I'm going, to, I'm going to spend the week reprogramming my brain. I love Monica, it. You no, know, you guys, when I did it with, with Tanya, I got so much lovely feedback afterwards. Oh, I got funny. people crawling out of the woodwork saying, wow, I never actually knew all that stuff about you. That was really, really uh, amazing. So so you yeah. invite people to come and watch? Yeah. Well, yeah, you people, just, people just, you can. I don't think I did. People just were there and just dumped on because they saw it happening. Yeah, the other thing is too, they can watch it afterwards. So I share it to my page and because you'll be tagged in it, your friends will see it at the time, but they'll also see it afterwards. And I think that you, did you share it on your page as well, Maxine? I know that Sim and Tammy has, have done that and Jan, I know they did that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so then you can share it afterwards. And so another thing that I'll ask you after the questions is I'll just give your friends an opportunity to ask any questions if they want to while they're on the live, if they want to ask you any questions. And then I'll also um, invite you to tell everybody who's watching who it is that, that, so what do you want in team? What do you look for in team? So you can have a think about that too. Yep. You know, one of the attributes you would love to have for the values, all of that. Um, you know, everyone's different. So that's exciting that you guys are doing that. That's the first step to stepping outside of your comfort zone. So if you can do a live, you can do anything. Don't you agree, Maxine? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll be honest, I, I do still have my fears about inviting friends to look at the, the um, business, but... You um, have, though. You have. You've done it. Have. I have, and I haven't had any, any negative... Um, any negativity either. So. You did ask friends. You asked Shirley and you asked Mummy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's another thing too, Moni. You've got some customers. You can be inviting your customers. That's, right. a, that's a really good way to do it. So if you've got customers that are really enjoying the product or the program, yep. and you can offer them an opportunity to get their, um, to get paid for their product that they're buying. I put some verbiage up there in the Towards SDVF chat group on inviting your customers to have a look. 
You can just copy and paste that. Okay. Yeah, and I've actually invited all my customers, and so have I. Um, they've said they've said no, but they've actually thanked me for letting them know. Mm. Yeah, so is mine. And I had one that was really, really super keen to jump in, and then her husband was like, "It's network marketing. You're not doing that." Oh, is that the <laughs> lady you were talking about that you loved? Yeah, yeah. I've got a beautiful lady. She's a counsellor. And she would be so perfect, and her husband's just really negative about it. So, mm. that, is he taking that, the product vaccine? Well, but no, he's not. No, yeah. Maybe she needs to stuff some in his food or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, something like that. I know that Orla talks about the, you know, the soul, the spiritual changes, the spiritual growth, and emotional growth that you get from it as well. I know that it certainly helps to balance your mind a lot better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe it changes attitudes too. <laughs> Miracles happen every day. It's true. That is true. And you know, just are you is she still your customer, Maxine? Well she's on hold at the moment, but hopefully she'll go back on. Mm. That's okay. that's the really frustrating thing is that they're they're you know, he's the major breadwinner and they're very tight, very, very tight for money. So, mm. like, damn, you know. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, you've got so, one in Austria, though, haven't you, that you've asked that's quite interested? What's that? You've got another one in Austria that you've asked that's quite interested as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's really the product. She's so, a trader, so, hopefully, yeah. hopefully she'll get on. So you're still, the thing is you're still actually inviting, but it's just that you're not, you're not consistently inviting your friends. No, no, I'm not. Because the thing is, when the whole idea of, you know, obviously our business is all about networking. So it's about creating new friendships, it's adding new friends, and it's connecting with people so that you are making new friendships. And so when you connect with people in Messenger, you don't necessarily have to have a conversation about the business or the product. You just want to connect with them just to, in general conversation. Take an interest. Something Kira would say is, is be, become curious. Become curious about what they're doing. Become interested in what they're doing in their life. Because as you become more curious, you're actually building rapport and they're trusting you enough to open up to you more. And that's when they will start sharing things like your part, their pain with you. The other thing is when you are having a conversation with someone and you can say, hey, you know, it's been ages. Um, you know, last time we were together, your kids were like really young and now they've all grown up. Um, how are you doing and what are you doing in your life right now? And, you know, they'll say, well, you know, they'll reply and they'll usually most people will ask, how are you and what are you doing? And then you can say, oh, I'm really good. You know, I've, I've got into this online gig and I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving helping people or I'm loving being at home or I'm loving um, being able to travel. Or whatever it is that you're loving about it, be totally genuine about it and then just leave it there. If anyone's interested, they'll go, Wow, that sounds really cool. Tell me more about it. So those that aren't, they might say, oh, that sounds really good. That's, and they, they won't ask. And that's okay. You don't have to take it any further. You've planted a seed. Yeah. And so if they ask more, then you just tell them a little bit more, enough to, for them to stay curious and be more curious. And then at that point, if I want any more information, you can say, well, hey, we've actually got an online event coming up on, you know, whenever, or I can send you a link if you're interested in having a look. So you're not pushing anything. They're, they're coming to you. They're asking you. So that's another really good way of sending out invites without actually going directly to someone. It's an indirect way of doing it while being genuinely interested. You're just having a conversation with them. So maybe you could try that, Moni. Yeah, I'm just thinking about that. So that sounds more... And, 
Yeah, and maybe even for you, Karen, you could give that one a go because that, that has worked for me in the past. Yep. As soon as you chat to someone in Messenger, they see everything in your news feed for the next 60 days. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you need to go through and just chat to people on your friends list um, from time to time anyway to stay in their feed. So I do reach out to, to at least five people, five to ten people every day, and that's just some general conversation, so new people, people you haven't spoken to for a while. Yeah, and that will keep it going. And then again, you know, that's an opportunity for other conversations around the product or the business. They might tell you that they're not very well, or they might tell you they're not sleeping that great, or they've got no energy. Again, you can say, well, you know, I totally understand because I was the same. You know, I was like that for years. Um, so, you know, but then I found this amazing product that really helped me. And they're like, and most people will say, well, wow, what is that? Tell me about it. So yeah, that's another way that you can start the conversation around the product. So how does that sound? Doable? Brilliant. Great. Love that smile, Moni. <laughs> Feeling a bit more confident now? A bit more into it, yep. Great, great. You'd be, you'd be awesome. It's just getting past that, isn't it? You know, it's just making that first initial step. That's the hardest thing. Once you've done that, it gets easier. Yeah, I think it was next thing. I was having a conversation with a while ago about how it's okay for me to stand in front of a Aikido class and tell people what to do. But actually putting myself out there is, for some reason, a lot more difficult. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, it is. Especially when you haven't done that before. You're not used to doing that all the time. Do you know, I'll tell you a funny story. When I was a child, I was the shyest child ever. I used to hide behind my mother's skirt if anybody came over to talk to me. I was just so, so shy at, at college, at primary school, at college. I was so quiet and nobody... You know, like I was like the wallflower at school because no one really knew who I was. I remember going to the school reunion, the college reunion, years and years and years later, and someone someone from the, the cool group asking me to dance and saying, oh, who are you? And I said my name, and they're like, oh, I don't remember you. <laughs> you know, like, that's, because that's how quiet I was. I was so quiet and shy. And when I was 18, I remember my father was doing Toastmasters and, and he told he made me go to Toastmasters so that I got to be, so it got me more confident. So I would stand in front of, out in public and speak. And I'm like, I hated it. I just, I was like a bundle of nerves. I think I remember doing one speech. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's it, Dad. I'm not ever going back. And it wasn't until I actually started doing my social work training about eight years ago or nine years ago, nine, ten years ago now. And that's when we had to, and Prisca will remember this, Prisca was training with me, we had to um, present in front of our class, hey Prisca, we had to do our presentations and that was terrifying. But I tell you what, once I kept doing it, because we had to do it, that was three years of doing presentations, it just got easier and easier and easier. And so that's why for me, it's not so hard to talk on camera, it's not so hard to talk at events because it's something I got used to doing. So if you get used to doing it, and if you're doing it consistently, it becomes easy. So I'm a completely different person now to who I was way back when I was a teenager. <laughs> Funny that. Okay, well, I'm not gonna prattle anymore. Does anyone else have anything that they want to share and to, to um, ask? No? No. Sweet. Okay, well, thanks for coming, you, you lovely ladies. Thanks, Tanya. You're next. welcome. Okay. Yes, and Bye. I, think, you know, I think next time we need to bring some bubbly, just because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Prisca likes that idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay, have a lovely evening. All right.